Hey gang, so we are going to do the quadratic formula. So I had an original video here and I'm, I'm going to change it up. So here's what I want to tell you. This is like page, I think, um, nine or ten. It's the back page of your packet. So we're going to take a look at the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is a formula that works no matter what you have to solve. I apologize, my cat is coming through. Hello, kitty kitty. I know. Oh my goodness. There we go. And anytime you have to solve anything, the quadratic formula works. So we're going to take this first one. x squared minus 5x minus 36 equals 0. Now, what we've been doing, let me see if I can turn that off. Oh, that's too dark. Okay, we're going to go back to that. I will just move that over. We have a shiny spot right there. If I asked you to factor this, you would say, okay, well, let me draw my box. x squared, negative 36 make the rainbow negative 36 factors of 36 1 times 36 2 times let's see 18 3 times 12 4 times 9 and i'm trying to add up to negative 5 and you'd be like oh oh okay those right there if i did a negative 9 and a positive 4 i'd get negative 5 and so you'd come up here and you'd say a positive 4x and a negative 9x x and x, we like it when it's x squared, x times 4 would give me 4x, x times negative 9 would give me negative 9x, and negative 9 times 4 is negative 36, and you'd say, sweet, x minus 9, x plus 4. Okay, it was a little bit of work, it's not too bad, that one was pretty easy. Here's what the quadratic formula does. Now keep that in mind, you know what your answers are. Same problem, we're going to use the quadratic formula. What is the quadratic formula? Okay, it's a formula I will always give you. Um, Algebra star will always give it to you. I think SAT even gives it to you. Here's what it says. X equals, this is a story, I'm gonna tell you a little story, about a negative boy who couldn't decide yes or no if he should go to this really radical party. But don't worry, the boy was squared and he didn't go. And he missed out on a chance to meet four awesome chicks. And the party was over at 2 a.m. Okay, so for years I've been using that story to teach the quadratic formula. There's a whole lot of letters in there. And you're like, where do all those come from? You actually know. Because quadratic formulas are ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Right? That's our formula. There's a, there's b, there's c. So, in this scenario right here, let's label what A is. A would be the number in front of the X, which is 1. B would be the number in X squared. Number in front of the X would be negative 5. The C would be negative 36. What I do is I take these values and put them in here, and it works every single time. All right, I'm going to move this up. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Now, notice I didn't put anything in there, and I wish I had another color x marker, but I don't. But I do this because I want to be able to just plug those values in. All right, so the first one is B, so that's negative 5, negative 5, minus 4 times A times C, 2 times A. Now, that's a pretty interesting looking formula. How do I solve it? Here's what I do. I go to my calculator. Oh, and you can see I've already been working some of these today. I'm going to zoom this in. I'm going to do alpha Y equals enter parentheses, and the first one is negative 5 parentheses. That's the B. Now, this plus or minus, you do the plus first and the minus second. So I'm going to say plus second square root parentheses negative 5 parentheses squared. That's B squared. Always, 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 always use parentheses. Don't not do parentheses. Minus 4 times A, which is 1 times C, which is negative 36. All right, there's the top. Under the bottom, 
I do two parentheses one, two times A. All right, always double check, make sure you have it in right. Okay, so all of that mess equals four. Here's what you do to get the negative part when you change that plus to a minus. You move your cursor up, hit enter, and it's like a copy paste. It copies it and pastes it down below. Then you cursor back, go to the positive, push the operation of subtraction. So here's the difference. This is the operation of subtraction. This is when I want a negative number. I'm doing the operation of subtraction. So I'm going to hit operation subtraction and it changes it. Look at that. I hit enter. There's my answers. Four and negative nine. All right. So that means when you solve this, you get X equals four or X equals negative nine. Now, if you remember, my answers were this X minus four times X plus nine. That's when, when I factored it, what I got. These are the solutions. Those are the x-intercepts. That's what these are. This is factored form. Here's how it works. You remember those x's, how they always lie? Whenever x is in a relationship, and remember parentheses mean it's in a relationship, when you factor doing this, it's always x and x. It's always, always x and x. X is lie. It says it's 4, so when I put it in a relationship, it's a negative 4. X is negative 9. When I put it in a relationship, it lies, and it's a positive 9. These are the x-intercepts. This is factored form. Okay, I'm going to do another one. And I'm going to show you how this works again. All right, so this time I'm going to do, if you're on your page, I'm going to do number 2. So number 2 says 2x squared plus 7x plus 3 equals 12. All right, so here's the deal. It can't equal 12. It has to equal 0. Remember, it's ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Okay, let's move the 12 to the other side. So 2x squared plus 7x plus 3 minus 12 equals 0. Let's put the 3 and the 12 together. So 2x squared plus 7x minus 9 equals 0. All right, this is what I need to find the solutions of. I need to use the quadratic formula to find the solutions. So before I even start, I always label what I know. A is 2, B is 7, C is negative 9. All right, x equals the negative boy, and I use parentheses, couldn't decide if he should go to the radical party, but B was squared, the boy was squared, and he missed out on 4A, C, awesome chicks, over at 2AM. All right, now I'm going to plug in my values. B, B, A, C, A. So B is 7, B is 7. A is 2, negative 9, and 2. I don't have to do anything with it. I'm going to use my calculator. So here we go. I'm going to clear this out. Alpha Y equals parentheses. Nope, I forgot. Negative parentheses 7, parentheses, plus second square root. 7 squared, always put parentheses around that. I'm going to zoom in on that. That's a little hard for you all to see. Minus 4, parentheses, 2, parentheses, parentheses, negative 9, parentheses. 2, parentheses, 2, parentheses. I double check to make sure everything looks good. It does. So my first side is x equals 1. I go up, hit enter. Scroll backwards and change that plus sign to a subtraction sign. And or x equals negative 9 over 2. Okay, here's the beauty of this and why a lot of people choose it. Okay, remember I said it, these are my solution. Those are my zeros. Those are my x-intercepts. 
If I ask you to solve, I want to know the x-intercepts. I want to know the zeros. I want to know the solutions, whatever you want to call it. They all mean the same. But if I ask you to factor it, and you're like, oh, I'm going to use that quadratic formula. That's super easy. You find this right here, and you say it's x and x. x is lie. It says it's positive 1, but when I put it in the relationship, it's a negative 1. x is lie. It says it's negative 9 over 2, but it's actually a positive 9 over 2. But uh, Mrs. Dean, we can't have fractions. You told us we can't have fractions when we solve these. You're right. You cannot have fractions. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it's brilliant what you can do here. X minus 1. But what about this one? If you get a fraction, here's all you do. You take the denominator and you slide it up right in front of the X. As long as it's in that relationship, that same relationship, you just slide it right there. So that means this is 2X plus 9. Look at that. The factors of this are x minus 1, 2x plus 9. Works every time. So again, you can do it either way. Now here's the only other thing that can happen. Sometimes when you work these, they don't come out to be nice neat numbers like 1 and negative 9 over 2. Sometimes they come out to be irrational numbers. Turn your paper over to the back and take a look at number 9. This is number 9. Now, here's what I want to show you. If, like, the other thing you might be asking yourself is, when do I use this formula? I, I like the box mess. Now, I don't want to have to learn this crazy formula you're showing me. Here's why you would have to know it. x squared plus 4x plus 1 equals 0. It's on a test. I say, factor it. And you say, I got you. Factor it. I'm going to draw my box. I'm going to put the first term and the last term. You don't actually have to do this on your paper. If you're doing it on your paper, that's fine, but you don't need to. Just watch because I'm showing you why you can't do this. Make the rainbow. That's 1 times 1. Oh, factors of 1. That's easy. 1 times 1. Okay, I need the factors that multiply to give me 1, but add to give me 4. Um, yeah, do you get my point? You can't do that. There's no way to factor this. We would call this a prime quadratic. You can't factor it. There's no way to factor it. But if I were to graph it, there are solutions. There are zeros. If I graph it, it does cross the x-axis twice. So there are solutions. You just can't factor it. So that's the situation when you go, oh, that's when I use that quadratic formula. Okay, A equals 1, B equals 4, C equals 1. Here we go. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2A. All right, uh, let's see, B is 4 and 4. A is 1, C is 1, A is 1. I'm going to take my calculator. There we go. Alpha Y equals negative parenthesis 4 parenthesis plus second square root parenthesis 4 parenthesis squared. Always, always use parentheses. Minus 4 parenthesis 1 parenthesis parenthesis 1 parenthesis 2 parenthesis 1. Now, all these ones, you may be thinking, Ms. Dean, really? I know that 4 times 1 is 1. I don't really need to put that in. That's fine if you want to. I'm just going to put it in so you can see it. Oh, my gosh. That's the first number. Yeah, that's not pretty. I move up. I copy and paste it down. I'm going to go over. I'm going to change that positive to a negative. Not a negative, but a subtraction sign. Ooh, yuck. Those are the solutions. So I'm going to say that x equals negative 0 0.27. Where did I get 27? This was actually 0 0.267949, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to do two decimals. So the 7 would round that 6 up. Two decimals. Two decimals. And x equals negative 3.73. This one was negative 3.73205, blah, blah, blah. Two decimals. The two would not round the three. 
So I leave it. When you do IXL, it wants two decimal places, the one hundredths place. One hundredths, whatever, so I can't say that. One hundredths place. <laughs> anyway. Okay, and that's all there is to it. So some of your answers are going to be nice and neat. Nine, five halves, whatever. Zero, an x-intercept could happen at zero. So know that you could have x equals zero. Here's what I recommend you do for today. I recommend that at the front of the room, I have a big old pile of dry erase boards. I recommend you go get a marker and a board, and you do this on your board. X equals negative parentheses plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. I recommend you do that. And then when you're on IXL and it gives you a problem, because we're going to be doing BB8 and BB11, and it, you use the quadratic formula for each one of them. So when you get your first problem and you go, okay, A is 2, B is 3, C is 1. I don't want to restart my computer. Go away. Then you can just plug these in there. And if you write kind of small, let's see, B is 3, 3, 2, 1, 2. Then you've got it written out. You could solve it with your calculator. And then when you're done, just erase what's inside your parentheses. It makes it a whole lot easier for you. Again, boards are at the front of the room. So you're going to focus on these two. Now, what are you going to do? So after you've got that, here's what you need to know for the test on Friday. AA4, AA5, AA6, and these two right here, these five skills are potentially on your test that you're taking to, on Friday. I will not be in your class on Friday, so remember that. Not all of these, but three of these skills will be on your test. The test, I'm going to take five IXL skills. I'm going to add them up and average them, and that's going to be your test grade. One test grade taken off of five IXLs. You could get hundreds on all five, make an easy 100. You could get 70, 90, 100, and maybe 100 and 100 on the other one. Still a great grade. If you take the time to go ahead and get all of these to 100, work on these, try and get these to 100. These are really easy. It's the quadratic formula. You're just going to be doing alpha y equals and using that formula over and over and getting answers. I'm plugging them in. Okay, get those as high as you can. Maybe you can't get 100, and don't worry. You don't know which three of these I'm going to pick. Odds are, you know, you could think, well, this one's in the middle. Maybe she's going to pick that one. I don't know. I'm going to pick three of them. And then I'm going to pick two other skills that you have not done yet. Everything will be due Friday before you leave school. So don't plan on Friday doing a few of these and then eh, I'm just going to do them when I get home. I'll do it Saturday. Nope. I'm only taking it on Friday. You have until Friday when school is out, basically, to get your two extra skills up to whatever grade you get it to. If you don't do it, you could look at it that way, see what 400s divided by 5 would be. So, anyway, know that I'm going to do that. So, you have this. I would use a dry erase board. I would do this. Your goal right now is to do BB-8 and BB-11. Good luck. Thanks for watching, y'all.